In this video we shall discuss some more cases of joins with count and aggregation functions usage. In the first task we have to show all authors along with subscriptions to their books count. It as we have to show the list of authors and information about how many books of each author were taken by subscribers. In MySQL we may achieve that result the following way. We select author ID, author name, and then we count how many books of that author were taken by subscribers. We have to use three tables to select that information. From authors table we select author ID and author name. Then we are joining this table with this table storing information about connections between books and authors. So, in other words, we are selecting the list of books for each author. And then we are joining the result with subscriptions table to select all occurrences of a situation when a book of some author was taken by a subscriber. And then we count such occurrences. The only thing left is to group the result by author ID to make the count function perform its work for each author separately. Also pay attention that in the first case we are using inner join because we do not have authors without books or books without authors. And in the next case we are using left outer join because some books may not be taken by subscribers at all. With Microsoft SQL Server the approach is the same. We are still selecting author ID, author name, the count of occurrences of such a situations where a book was taken by subscriber for each author. And the only difference here is that we cannot use using syntax, we have to use classical on syntax. And we have to repeat this function call here because Microsoft SQL Server does not allow us to reference this named result. With Oracle the solution is exactly the same as for MySQL. We are selecting author ID, author name, we are counting the occurrences of a situations where a book was taken by a subscriber for each author. We also using that using syntax and we do not have to repeat the count call here because we may reference this named result. In the next task we have to show the most popular author or authors if many. In each DBMS we may use several approaches to this task. Let's start with MySQL and with max function. This common table expression returns exactly the same data as was described in the previous solution. Then we only have to find out the maximum value for books count for each author and select only those authors whose books count is equal to that maximum value. The next approach is to use a rank function. This is a slightly modified query from the first solution. We've only added this block here. And this block returns us this column. It's like in sports, where we have the first place, the second place, the third place and so on. And we only select those authors standing on the first place. With Microsoft SQL Server we may also use max function. We may calculate how many books were taken by subscribers for each author, then we have to select the maximum value from that information and then finally we have to select only authors having books taken equal to that maximum value. The second approach for Microsoft SQL Server is once again is exactly the same as for MySQL. We are using rank function here. For each author we are calculating how many books of that author were taken by subscribers and we are also calculating the rank once again like in sports who is on the first place, on the second, on the third and so on. And finally we are selecting only those authors standing on the first place. But Microsoft SQL Server provides us with another approach. It's top with ties. How does it work? We are still calculating the same data, the same information about how many books of each author were taken by subscribers. Then we are ordering this data set in descending direction, here is the result, and then we are telling the DBMS to select only one first record but with ties. That means that DBMS will not only select the first record, but it will analyze this value and also select all other records having the same value in this field. The Oracle approach is exactly the same as MySQL approach. We may use max function, 
First we calculate how many books of each author were taken by subscribers, then we are selecting the max value from here and finally we are selecting authors having as much books as that maximum value. Or we may use the rank function to place each author on the first, the second, the third and so on place and finally to select only those authors standing on the first place. And finally, which variant is faster? You may see that max approach is the slowest one for all three DBMSs. Some alternatives give us almost the same performance, but in some cases we achieve significant changes. And yet remember that this is not some kind of mathematical rule or something like that. This is only for that particular case. And in some other particular cases you may see a different picture here. Now let's go deeper and calculate average author's popularity. So we have to calculate the average value of that values showing us how many books of each author were taken by subscribers. In case you've forgotten how to calculate average value, here's the simple explanation. Imagine that we have the following elements. We have three elements here and we have that values. So we have to calculate the sum of that values and divide it by the quantity of that elements. And here how we get our average result. So first we have to calculate how many books of each author were taken by subscribers. Here it is. And then we pass this information to AVG function. And that's how we get our final result. For Oracle the solution is exactly the same, but for Microsoft SQL Server we have to perform one additional operation. We have to convert these integers into floats, otherwise the result will also be integer it as incorrect. Now in the next task let's show not average but median author's popularity. This is the expected result and this is the reminder on how to calculate median value. We may have two cases here. In the first case we have odd elements quantity. So here we have three elements. So we just order them in ascending mode. Then we are selecting the central element and that's the result. So here it is. In the second case, when we have even elements count, we also have to order them ascending. Then we have to select two central elements and calculate the average value of them. So here are our two elements, then we are dividing the sum of them by two and that's the final result. The difficulty here is that not all DBMSs support inbuilt functions for median calculation. MySQL does not for now. But still we may produce information about how many books of each author were taken by subscribers. Then we may number rows of that data set. Here is the rows numbering. Then with some arithmetic tricks we have to find out the central row or the central rows. And we pass that value or values into AVG books. So when we have only one value as in this case, that's the result. But if we have two values here, the AVG function will produce the average result of that two values and thus it will give us the final expected result. With Microsoft SQL Server the solution is simpler. We only have to produce the initial data set containing information about how many books of each author were taken by subscribers. Then we have to use such function telling it to calculate the median value. And we have to use distinct keyword otherwise this function will produce us as many rows as the initial data set has. But we only need one row. And that's why we use this distinct keyword. And the solution for Oracle is the simplest one. Once again we produce that information about how many books of each author were taken by subscribers. Then we are getting the data set, passing it to median function and that function produces our final expected result. And in the final task in this video we have to show if there is such an error as subscribers have taken more copies of a book than there was in the library. We have to return 1 if error exists, 0 if doesn't. This is a typical common approach to checking if our database contains an error or not. We may see that our database does not contain that error and now we shall see SQL queries to get that value. We've already discussed this approach in one of our previous videos in this course. First we have to calculate how many books were taken by subscribers for each book. 
Then we have to calculate for each book how many copies is left in the library. Then we have to select only negative values. And we use that limit syntax here because we do not have to select all data. We only have to find out if such records exist or not. And once we have all this information, we may pass it to exists function. And this function will return us 1 if a single record exists here and 0 if no records exist here. With Microsoft SQL Server we are following the same approach. We are calculating for each book how many copies of that book were taken by subscribers. Then we are calculating how many books are left in the library for each book. Then we are selecting only negative values. Then we are keeping only one record here because we do not need any more than one, only one or zero. And then we use case expression to transform the result from exists function into one or zero because Microsoft SQL Server does not perform that conversion automatically as MySQL does. And with Oracle the approach is the same. We are calculating for each book how many copies of that book were taken by subscribers, then we are calculating how many copies of that book is left in the library, then we are selecting negative values only, then we are leaving one record only, and then we are passing that information into exists function and transforming its result into 1 or 0, because Oracle follows Microsoft SQL idea and does not perform automatic conversion of this result into 1 or 0. And that's all, that's how we get our final result.